Hi guys, Olive here, here today to discuss the movie adaptation of Where'd You Go Bernadette and how it compares to its original source material. The book that inspired the movie has the exact same title, Where'd You Go Bernadette by Maria Semple. It was first published back in 2012 and it was a hit with readers and critics alike. The paperback spent a year on the New York Times bestseller list and back when I started watching booktube videos back in 2014 this was one that everyone was giving a read. It was originally supposed to be released in May of 2018 but that release state just kept getting pushed back until it was finally released in quarter three of 2019. So this one was a long time coming. For those unfamiliar with the story or simply needing a refresher, this is a comedy slash drama set in Seattle, Washington, centering around the life of the neurotic, agoraphobic Bernadette Fox, her tech executive husband Elgin, and their 15-year-old daughter B. At the beginning of the book, Bernadette has gone missing, and B starts investigating her mom's disappearance by digging through her electronic correspondence with a variety of different people, trying to figure out what happened to her and bringing us along for the ride. We slowly start to realize that her mom has some serious demons that she's sheltering behind a very snarky veneer, and the way she's dealing with her past traumas is only causing her more problems in the present. With this dilapidated old mansion that the family is living in, with her obsessive PTA mom neighbors, with the city of Seattle, which she viscerally hates, with her sleeping patterns, or just with socializing in general. So in the book, we're getting a drip feed of Bernadette in very measured doses, since all we have of her are her electronic communications. But on a core level, we know that that's not the true Bernadette that we're seeing, because this is her in a social situation, albeit electronic, and we know that she's bad with people. While in the movie, the camera is pointed on Bernadette the vast majority of the time. So you need an actress who can stand up to that kind of pressure. And the casting in this movie is just perfection because the brilliant Kate Blanchett stars as Bernadette in this movie. And she just knocks it out of the park. She slides into the role of this paralyzingly smart yet jumbled mess of a middle school mom with such ease. I think a really hard part about the character of Bernadette is that she's not just some stereotypical pill-popping suburban soccer mom. She's actually a former artist, and while I won't go into any details about what her life as a former artist was like, because I don't want to spoil that part of it for you, at the beginning of the movie and the book, she has lost that part of herself. So you can clearly tell that she's well-educated, she still definitely has a confidence about her, she's just actively making a mess of everything. She still knows on a deep personal level what she's capable of, but she's been hit so hard with loss time after time that it almost seems that it doesn't feel worth it for her to push against the natural current of the universe. Bernadette still has some confidence to her, and that's part of what makes Kate Blanchett such a perfect choice for this role. She has this natural self-assurance about her that allows her to broadcast this more pessimistic Lorelai Gilmore type of wit. There's some really good acting in this movie, of course from Blanchett, but from the other actors as well, there wasn't a single performance that I stubbed my toe on going through. Emma Nelson stars as B, and Billy Crudup plays Bernadette's husband, Elgin. Kristen Wiig is particularly good as their uppity neighbor, Audrey, and there are some other celebrity cameos in there as well. Starting to go into some of the differences that I noticed between the movie and the book, I definitely have to mention the character of Elgin Brie. Bernadette's husband. He is a lot more personable in the movie than he is in the book. In the book, he feels really defeated and emotionally absent, which totally makes sense once you understand his situation. But in order for his character to work in the movie, you had to be able to feel for him. So I totally get and agree with their decision to make him more present and more lovable. And although I loved the portrayal of Bernadette in the movie, she is a lot more jittery and paranoid in the book. She thinks someone is following her. So the book version is a lot like Blanchett's rendition, only after far too many cups of coffee. But one thing that they were really able to do successfully in the movie that the book's format just would not have allowed for is the way that they're able to show both sides of the people in this marriage, both Elgin and Bernadette. You get to see both takes on the situation that they find themselves in. 
And it really illustrates how marriage can feel sometimes. That you're living in the same reality very closely to someone else, and yet their perception of that exact same reality can be so drastically different that you might as well not even be in the same universe. Seeing that on the screen makes it so much easier to grasp that these two people are not on the same page anymore when we know that they once were. The biggest difference I think you'll notice between the book and the movie is that the book is very firmly rooted in the past. B is trying to move backward in time, trying to figure out the present, trying to figure out what happened to her mom. So much so that once you finally get back to the present moment, it feels like you're coming out of a fog. Meanwhile, in the movie, we're seeing all these scenes play out in the present when in the book, those would have been in the past tense. It gives it a much different vibe and there is a whole lot less mystery to it. I mean, the very first scene of this movie more or less gives away the question in the title, but although it's marketed as a mystery, anyone who's read the book will tell you that actually finding Bernadette isn't really the point. It's about uncovering how she got to be the way that she is. The way the book feels is obsessive, if that makes sense, because you have the way that Bernadette is, you have Elgin, who is very firmly a workaholic, and then you have Bee going down her own rabbit hole trying to figure out what happened to her mom. But the movie feels more like floating on your back in a body of water, slowly drifting away from home until you snap out of it and start paddling back. When I was looking on Rotten Tomatoes, I saw that this movie doesn't have that great of a score right now, which was really surprising to me. I thought it was a very solid B plus, if not an A minus. I think this book made sense to adapt into a movie, and I definitely do not always feel that way about book to movie adaptations. But I think the fact that this book is in a mixed media type of format, it consists of emails and transcripts from documentaries. I think the fact that the book is in that format meant that it was never going to be easy to translate this book into a screenplay. Some things had to fall by the wayside. The Manjula storyline, for instance, was very watered down. But I can't think of any way that they could have done this better. I was really pleased with the way they adapted this. If you loved the book, I think the chances are really good that you're also going to enjoy the movie, if only because they stay extremely faithful to the book. There are so many lines and scenes ripped straight from it. I personally was going into the movie crossing my fingers for a nice good rant about five-way intersections, and I got one, so I was extremely excited. Oppositely, you may be wondering if it's even worth your time to go back and read the book if you've already seen the movie, but I absolutely think it is. I've never considered this one of those types of stories where it's completely ruined for you if you know how everything plays out, because this is a story about characters. It's about Bernadette. It's about where she's been, what she's gone through, and how she's going to work her way through all of this to get through to the other side. And if you loved her on the screen and you want more of her, you are going to love her on the page and vice versa. This story is about how we try to hide the demons that we carry around with us when really every single thing we do is a dead giveaway that we're trying to conceal them under our jackets. It's a whole lot easier and better for us if we just live out in the harsh light of day. And the real bottom line of the whole thing, artists gotta art. So those were my thoughts and feelings on the movie adaptation of Where'd You Go, Bernadette? I would love to hear from you if you've seen this movie, if you want to see it, or if I've convinced you to see it. You can put that or any other comments or questions you may have down in the comment section below, or you can find me on a variety of different places on social media, and the links to all of my profiles are linked in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.